Ganapatiye Namaha Om Gam Ganapatiye Namaha Om Gam Ganapatiye Namaha Om Brahma Miristriparan Takare Banu Shashi Bhumi Suto Buddha Sha Guru Sha Shukra Shani Rahu Keteva Sarvegraha Shantikara Bhavantu Om Greetings and welcome to another episode of Cosmic Kev 100 Astrology, your weekly astro video zine. This one is for Friday, June 17th, 2022. Now, one thing we can say about this week is that in the sidereal zodiac, the sun has now moved into Gemini. That actually happened a few days ago. And as of today, I believe Venus is moving into sidereal Taurus in the sky. So with these two things, and, and especially with the sun um, being in the lunar mansion of Mrigashira right now, which is half Taurus, half um, Gemini in, in the Vedic zodiac, there's a real coming together of energies about what it is we're passionate about, you know, and, and this is also the week where we're going to have um, summer solstice uh, early in the morning on June 21st, so the longest day of the year. And so there's just this incredible buildup of energy this week. And, and since Taurus is, um, and Venus is in Taurus this week, and Mercury's about to, you know, move into, is in Gemini, but will eventually be into uh, sidereal Gemini, is that we're really getting in touch with what our passions are with these Raja planets. And... Um, and beyond that, <clears throat> there, there is just this uh, essence of completion, because we had a full moon last, last week on Tuesday. And so right now, we're in a waning moon, and we're just kind of letting things settle with all of this, you know, being more, more settled with, with where all the planets are right now. And, you know, and there is, you know, in Western astrology, because of this whole Jupiter-Mars connection, we have to get ourselves as much as possible into the earth, into nature, to keep ourselves away from irritation and anger. And so nature will soothe us and working with nature and working hard outside is going to help us. And all of your good actions and prayers are going to help us as well. <clears throat> so with that said, I'm, I believe we are absolutely ready to go sign by sign, starting with you, Aries. So greetings, Aries, and welcome to your horoscope. Um, you know, you've got a lot of energy right now. And if you're somebody who is a male person, or you're just a person that has a lot of masculine energy in your life, this is your week. I mean, Jupiter can be symbolic of fathers. Mars is certainly the masculine principle. This and Jupiter expands everything it touches. It also brings this spiritual edge to it that they're, you're going to learn a lesson. You know, I, I recently thought to myself, you know, oh man, Saturn's the one who gives you hard lessons, but I, I'm not so sure anymore, you know. I'm actually thinking Jupiter being the teacher of the Zodiac, and in my own personal life being in Jupiter Dasha, I'd say Jupiter brings on some serious lessons. And... Um, <clears throat> What does Jupiter want to teach us, you know? And Jupiter wants to teach us to be generous and to be honest. Those are the two first things. He's also known as the guru to the gods. You know, it's light. The, it brings us light, takes away darkness. So think about that as you go through your week, Aries. This is so important. I mean, Gemini Sun, yes, that's important. It means your social life is uh, an upgrade. But that's moving this week. That's moving into your 12th house. I mean, into pipe, not not your 12th house, pardon me, um, moving into your fourth house into Cancer this week. So you're going to find what makes you feel at home, what makes you feel comfortable with yourself, and if you're dealing with a move or you're trying to sell anything like a house or a car, big fixed assets, um, this is a week where you could focus on some of that energy as well. So with that said, we're going to just move on over into... Taurus. Okay, 
So greetings Taurus and welcome to your horoscope. What I'm finding here for you is Gemini as a sun sign is about where the money's at and what you're eating and what you're speaking about and how can we fulfill good thoughts? What takes us to a place of ultimate happiness? I was so lovely today. I was listening to um, a show when I was recording this called New Dimensions, and they were talking about how we get smarter when we hang out with good friends. I thought, how interesting that is, you know, and because this week, sun's moving in your third house. That's a sign of good friends and siblings. And so, in your, and it's also about communication and interactions, too, and so you're getting, your neighbors, your environment, your personal library, what you put your put in your head, that's so important this week. And certainly with this, this is the week where we have the most sun of the whole year in 2022, if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, which 90% of us do. It is, it's going to stimulate a lot of life. And it's not, you know, unless you're injured or it's too hot to be outside, you, you may not want to just like kick back and read. At the same time, <clears throat> fill yourself with good thoughts, you know, digest information that's going to make you a better person. It's going to put you in, in such wonderful alignment and um, <clears throat> that's going to help. You know, it's interesting for you because when the moon is in your sign it is exalted you know and so you've got this real connection with the divine mother and you know maybe you don't believe in that kind of thing but i i would encourage you to practice it your mother chose to have you and in some way no matter how that worked out positive or negative in your life or absent there was a gift that was given to you from her and i want you to just be able to align with that gift as we go through the week also you know your venus rule Venus is moving into Gemini, um, I think it's, you know, tomorrow even, and um, it's important to see the two sides of love, and that love should be playful in a way, you know. There's a little bit of a joker and a trickster in Gemini, at least in, in the Western version of astrology, and you have to be aware of that. Um, be honest, though. Because one lie always leads to another lie. You have to have lies to fortify other lies, you know? It's, it's like, it's so much work. Who needs that? <laughs> Some Geminis, they're almost like schizophrenic. Oh, that was my other self saying that, you know? It's like, oh, please give me a break. <laughs> and with that said, we're going to move on to the sign of Gemini right now. And uh, let's, greetings Gemini and welcome to your horoscope. All right, it's all about you this week, or at least through uh, the 20th, you know. So we've got today, Friday, and then tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, um, and uh, so it's 17th, 19th, 20th. And then bada boom, it's a new sign on the 21st. So in these four days, as we're closing off, one of my um, fellow astrologer friends, a late Steve Spirit, would say to me, Kevin, we, sent, we saved the best for last, that the last degrees of the zodiac are, are the best or the most powerful. One reason I can see some truth in this is that the last degrees of the western zodiac coincide with the sidereal zodiac. Those last six degrees, it's Gemini in Indian Vedic astrology, it's Gemini in tropical western astrology. Okay. Um... Two sides to every story. This late part of Gemini, we really focus on comma, making connection. You know, who do we know? How do we treat them? And when people maybe don't treat us right or we're less comfortable with them, this is actually our opportunity for growth. This is our opportunity to, to present our best self within co conflict and lead to a gentle place. Do you ever? Have you ever had a time in your life where you weren't super proud of how you acted and someone who might have been a little bit older, more experienced, or just more mature in their own way led you to a place of reconsidering how you behaved and it was gentle enough 
that it led to a better relationship. I've had that happen to me, and uh, I want to thank those people. I'm, I'm thinking of a couple of, of different men in my life, different incidences. One was Eric Matisson, who was the founder of KZFR here in Chico. Wonderful man. Uh, another one was um, a gentleman named Lee, who, uh, with his wife Francine, had the grub farm. So I'm just wanting to just thank these people, you know, for approaching a difficult situation with me in a way that was gentle and truthful enough that it helped me become a better person and be more conscious, you know. And, and so, so for you, Gemini, and now that Mercury's, you know, moving into your first house, you're really conscious about what's going on more than ever, and you see a lot of value and, and opportunities to make money, opportunities for career, opportunities for social engagement, um, and, you know, Saturn's teaching you today. I mean, we've got a moon in Shravana today, you know, and, uh, which is Capricorn and Vedic, but, uh, you know, Aquarius and Western astrology, and this particular moon is teaching us to listen. And Geminis, I relate a lot to Gemini, we like to talk. Mm -hmm. And when we listen, we learn something new. Okay, all right. So, um, greetings Cancer and welcome to your horoscope. Okay, so the sun's about to go into Cancer. And um, it happens early in the morning, I think a little after 2 in the morning, Wednesday morning. Pacific daylight time, of course. We're this is where we're at here in Chico, California. Um, what about it? You know, what is this? Well, in Gemini, where <clears throat> there's this buildup, where we're wanting to be involved in our community and whatnot. In Cancer, we learn the value of the nighttime. You know, suddenly the sun is going to get a little bit smaller every day. I mean. Gemini and Cancer are the brightest signs where the sun's up the longest. So it's still long days. It's not like, oh. But it's like we, we suddenly realize here, you know, life is kind of fleeting. This isn't going to go on forever. Oh, my goodness, who do I value? I value my loved ones. You know, Cancer being the mother and symbolic of families and symbolic of what our emotional state is and our feelings. You know, in times when I was a young man growing up in the 60s and 70s, a lot of it was, you know, screw your feelings, strengthen, strengthen yourself, you know, just ignore that and just get on with it. You know, I do not believe that is good advice. I want you to know that there is a power in your feelings and that your feelings are part of your innate intelligence and that when you honor those feelings, it's easier for you to move beyond them. But if you try to stuff them because it's just like you don't want to be unpleasant, um, you know, that's other people's problem, to be honest with you. If you're going through something, you have a right to reach out and get the help you need. And you also have a right to be able to share, you know, this may not be my, my best day today. And, and just stating what's going on in your life helps you compartmentalize it so it doesn't just like spread out and explode into every single part. And the other part of this I want to say is happy birthday. For God's sake, a, lot, a couple of you are going to have birthdays this week for sure. And um, what an honor it is to have a solar return and to be in that family of people in the sign of cancer because when I think about the sign of cancer I think about people that really care and I feel and yeah sure there's a shadow side sometimes the claws get attached and you can't let go I get it you know and so just be gentle with yourself is what I want to say as you go through this week and you're going through renewal things can be kind of traumatic during your birthday and that season and, and so just love and continue to love and realize that you have this natural, innate, nurturing quality about you. Mm. All right. Well, greetings, Leo, and welcome to your horoscope. Okay. Now, 
Gemini time, so this weekend is the last you know, weekend of sun being in Gemini for you, and that means it's 11th house, that's the party, you know what I mean? That's the social life. It also can be older siblings, it can be older people that have mentored you and helped you, and they want to treat you to something, they want to do something really nice to you. And I guess, you know, since we're having cancer this week, I get in my own little sentimental world, I, I was thinking of the late Lorenzo Lawrence Thatcher. Uh, he was like <clears throat> a great mentor to organic farming to so many people in this local area. And those of you who are a little older and have lived in this region for a while, you might have known him. Yeah, he was a wild man. Um, <clears throat> but I was thinking to myself, yeah, he really brought on 11th house experiences for me. You know, he took me out to dinner. He did some really nice things for me. And, um, and many people with his generosity, with his amazing olive oil, all that stuff. And so there was such a learning, and he got people together during olive harvest, and I thought that was another wonderful thing about him. And, I mean, he wasn't a Leo sun sign, but he had that kind of quality of, like, bigger than life. A lot of you Leos can be like that. Not all of you, but there is sort of this grandiosity that comes with the sun. And so we're, we're looking at that grandiosity. So, you know, the moon starts this weekend opposite. So this is actually a romantic moon this Friday night. It's a, you know, for you, it's a partnership moon. It's also a good moon for business, whatever business dealings you have. It's good for that. <clears throat> Mercury moving into your 11th house is good for money. And uh, with Jupiter in your 9th house with Mars, there's a lot of good fortune. There's some good learning. And if you wanted to be a uh, physical education instructor, yoga instructor, coach of some sort. It's a very auspicious position in the sky for that. And even Saturn in your seventh house, it, it, it really stresses, you know, it's the seventh house is ten, ten houses from the tenth house. It, it helps you manifest more business opportunities and career opportunities. <laughs> Greetings Virgo, <clears throat> and welcome to your horoscope. So, you know, Virgo is the sixth sign of the zodiac in normal tropical astrology. And it is the place where, it is like the last sign where we're working on our inner life to where we become more focused on others. So we're working on ourself. And this, it's really the, a lot of times, it's a sign of self improvement, self help. One of the versions is a virgin, you know, to be untouched. And one of the most beautiful things is to make space. Um, I think of Japan as a culture that is very influenced by the sign of Virgo. They're really into um, the Zen thing of making space, having open areas. Open areas are so important, even in meditation practice. It, to tell someone to think of nothing is very weird, you know, in a lot of ways. But I think if you think of spaciousness, oh, you know, I, there's nothing but space. Or if you're in a very stark desert area like the Bonneville Salt Flats or Death Valley, there's all this space. There's a huge horizon. Or someplace in the Great Plains like eastern Kansas and western um Colorado. It's just, it's space. It's not mountains. Colorado's not all mountains or even Eastern Oregon. It's a lot, a lot of it is space. And so, um, opening up yourself to this, this idea of spaciousness. Now, Gemini heralds in our career, our talents and skills, and our ability to move forward with other people and to make good connections. So, you know, in a lot of ways too, it's, um, we're looking at our talents and skills. But now this week, we've got the sun moving into Cancer. Cancer's our 11th house, that's the party, you know? So for those of us who are influenced by Virgo, Virgo moon, Virgo rising, Virgo sun, there's gonna be more opportunities to party and get together with people. It's very appropriate, you know? You don't have to guilt yourself about it. Show up, make connections, it's gonna feel good, you know? <laughs> and um, I, I see this week as, you know, 
helping others, making donation for the weekend, just starting off on that. And by Sunday, you'll be feeling more of like kind of a little more romantic vibe on Sunday, Monday, and then we get into um, Tuesday, Wednesday. You'll be, um, you know, it's good to just pay off your debts and work on transformation. Um, we're going to talk Libra now. Greetings, Libra. Welcome to your horoscope. I'm just getting wet, getting all cranked up here with astrology. <laughs> well, Gemini is a, is another air sign like you. So Gemini rules your um, your ninth house. Ninth house is a house of teachers. Ninth house is a house of travel. Ninth house is a house of your father. It's about foreign languages, foreign culture. It's about really juicy, deep, big information. You know, you're getting bigger stuff coming to you. And now that Mercury's in Gemini, Mercury's like the ultimate student, Ninth house is higher information. It's like you're able to learn better than you've learned in a long time. You know, huh? And so keep that in mind. Sun moving from that ninth house of learning and, and experiences, exotic experiences sometimes. Sometimes even being in an ashram or having a spiritual experience could be ninth house. Then we move in the tenth house. This is where we use our karma with the outer world, with the public, to show what is going to make us more effective as humans in the outer world. So, you know, this is what I see with a lot of Libras on a mundane level. is like, oh my gosh, people are taking off for vacation, so they're expecting me to work. And, you know, a lot of Libras are pretty compliant because they like to get along. This actually moves you in a leadership position. Tenth house is like leadership, so... You know, watch what happens on the 21st and afterwards. There'll be more leadership opportunities. There'll be more career opportunities for you. Uh, Venus in Taurus is, um, you know, going to move over into Gemini, I think sometime next week or something. So, you know, you're going to go from this place of kind of this maybe uneasy transformation to like, oh, wow, life is an adventure again. I'm getting ready for this wonderful adventure. Mm -hmm. All right. Greetings, Scorpio, and welcome to your horoscope. Now, I mean, Gemini time for Scorpios, it's, you know, it's eighth house. So in a lot of ways, it's like, I had one friend tell me once, he says, I think that Gemini and Scorpio are the scariest signs of the Zodiac. And I'm like thinking to myself, I don't really find that to, to be necessarily true at all, but I understand it. You know, I understand people thinking, um, I think uh, a lot of ways, most astrologers I know, I think like Leo and Aries, because they're much more extreme masculine energy, it can be really, you know, and it's out of control, it can be really destructive, like a fire, and some people don't think that. Now, Scorpio, even though it's Mars ruled, like Aries, it's a fixed sign, and it's water. So it's got the masculine and feminine all contained within it. And it's also got the extra rulership of Pluto, which is about insights. And it's about transformation, creativity, and change. You know, Scorpio is actually one of the most creative signs in the zodiac. Think about it. Fixed water reflects everything. Our creative process is mostly reflecting on what's affecting us and then interpreting it in some kind of creative way. Scorpio is genius at this kind of thing. I mean, you think about Pablo Picasso. You think about Aaron Copeland, the songwriter. Um, I mean, or mus musician, rather. Or Veronica Lake, the actress or Joni Mitchell, the songwriter, there's just such, um, they're one of a kind. There's no one else who can do this type of thing. So, I mean, and now we're going from this Gemini, eighth house transformation level where things are kind of deep and it was other people's stuff, not your own stuff, to the ninth house. Cancer gives you that spiritual reward. It's like cancer loves Scorpio because it's like, oh, finally, someone else who has intense emotions and feelings and can relate to me. So it's like, yeah. Yeah, I'm feeling that too. And when you take that emotion and you put it in your meditation practice, your spiritual practice, oh my goodness, that is where the results really come from. It's not so much moves you make out there in the outer world. It's really all about the moves you make within your heart. Those are the moves that are going to affect the outer world. They're going to make you open to the right things. And so you've got this opportunity over the next four and a half, five weeks to um, transform 
the nature of your heart to learn higher knowledge, to develop some bigger skills, and to have some exotic experiences traveling and meet some really special people. Perhaps someone that's going to change your life forever with, with a new opportunity. Mm. Greetings Sagittarius and welcome to your horoscope. All right. Okay, I mean, I did bag a little bit on Leo and Aries and the, from the astrology platform, but let me tell you something, Sagittarius, before I get any further in this. Whenever you say, oh, they're this, or he's like, he's one of those, or she's one of those, you know, whenever we point our finger, there's four other fingers pointing back at us. Every one of us is every sign of the zodiac, first of all. So, you know, so I, you know, I... <laughs> I just think the word of I identify has gotten to be a little bit interesting in my in my time. But yeah, I, I mean, in a way, I identify as every sign of the zodiac. So the Sagittarius in me in Western astrology is Mercury. But I, but you, you, most of you who are watching this are probably Sun sign and Sagittarius. And so, what's the key phrase? Key phrase is I see or I visualize. Now you've got this symbol of the archer, you know, reaching out for its goal. And it's Jupiter rule. In a lot of ways, they say Sagittarius is the best teacher. Um, Leo and Sagittarius together, those two signs make incredible teachers. Uh, Jupiter gets activated by the fifth house, the house of Leo. So it's a karaka, you know. So Jupiter really um, helps move that teacher energy forward in, um, in Sagittarius, as well as Leo. So Gemini time is all about partnerships, it's about love, it's about romance, it's also about making business deals and being able to take your own talents and skills and share them more with others, share them more with the public and create a certain kind of justice in your own life, create a certain kind of balance. So we're moving into cancer time. Okay, transformation. Now one confession I've heard from a lot of fire signs is that water signs scare them, you know. And yeah, because if you're fire, water going to put that out. You know, water is not going to um, be a compatible element. But sometimes, you know, the thing I like about water and fire together is that water is the feminine of the feminine. Fire is the masculine of the masculine. And together, they make steam power. You know, the first vehicle of like an engine in society was like the locomotive in a lot of ways, the train. And that was ma mainly steam power that made that happen. So there's just this, this powerful thing of this more polarized feminine and masculine energy. So you're moving into that. A lot of times when we're in an eighth house transit, it's uh, other people's power, okay? We're letting, it's our spouse's power sometimes. It's death, sex, birth, other people's property. These are things we don't have a lot of control over personally. So it's like kind of this foreboding zone we're entering into. And it's really good to discover your feelings, to discover your intuition, and to let other people have their power and just kind of back off a little. I said, well, you know, this is my time to just kind of meditate and pay off my debts and let other people have the spotlight for a bit. Okay. Greetings, Capricorn. Welcome to your horoscope. Key phrases I use. Gemini time. What was that about? It's about working really hard and sometimes facing up to obstacles. Occasionally it's health issues and other types of difficulties. Challenges, you know. We all have challenges. Um, but Sun's moving this week into Cancer, which is your partnership sign in the seventh house. And you're very practical and kind of nuts and bolts of the zodiac. That's the that's the reputation. Now, granted, you have a bunch of other planets and other signs. So I, I really like I say I, I don't like the stereotypes of signs. It really bothers me. Um, but here's the thing, though, on, on like a physical level, how are your knees doing? You know, Capricorn rules our knees. It rules our bones. It rules our teeth. And Cancer rules like our stomach, digestion, and our breast or, you know, chest in some ways, very close to the heart chakra. And it's like getting beyond practicalities 
Cancer wants Capricorn to discover what's in your heart. It's like the Bob Marley song, Could You Be Loved? You know, and so I'm thinking, like, think about that as we, after summer solstice, it's like, oh, well, this is my season for love. This is my season to discover my emotions and feelings and be less worried about the nuts and bolts of life and be someone who is emotionally receptive. I had a beautiful emotional receptivity with a, with a friend this morning talking about spirituality and uh, our personal walk, our personal dharma. And it was so lovely, you know, and we just said prayers for each other and it was like, this is what we're here for, folks. <laughs> we're here to bring out the best. Um, greetings, Aquarius. Welcome to your horoscope. Well, we're starting out this weekend pretty nice with the moon in Aquarius in that Shravana Nakshatra, which is Capricorn and Vedic, but nonetheless, um, it's about listening. And Gemini time's been good to you. Gemini is the fifth house for Aquarius. And, you know, with Saturn ruled signs like Capricorn and Aquarius, getting into your heart is super important because, you know, you're really responsible and you're very public kind of worldly signs, you know. And there isn't as much room always for the personal life, especially Aries through Cancer. It's everything's very personal in those four signs, you know. And um, everything Sagittarius through Pisces is a lot more universal, you know. And, and so getting out of the universal and moving into the heart space, what does this mean for you? Well, it means helping others. You know, as you're helping others, you're showing kindness. And whenever we show kindness, we're showing, we're proving our intention to make the world a better place. You know, and, and what we do also when we're showing kindness is we're linking up with other souls that want to do the same thing. That's the party that all Aquarians really want anyhow. It's like, hey, let's get together, do kind works, and this will generate a good thing. That's why we have satsangs. That's why we have temples. That's why we have churches. It's ultimately that we want to get together to bring out the best in each other, to do good things. And if that's not what your satsang, your temple, or church is about, find a new one. <laughs> you know, um, you're really getting into your inner life this week, which is really appropriate. But like making donations, doing some volunteer work, cleaning up your diet, even fasting and stuff, that type of thing is going to really help you. All right, as we're uh, getting ready to close this thing, greetings Pisces, welcome to your horoscope. So Neptune's a really, it's an interesting one. You know, when Neptune was discovered, the Discovery telescopes got better and photography was invented. And petroleum, oil, became a, a product to um, lubricate and power machines. And there was incredible amounts of religious revivals and people looking to spirituality. It's really interesting when I think about this because as technology was advancing, people realized, wait a second. There's more than just what we make as, as human beings, machine. We need to return to spirit in some way. So we had different spiritual groups. And we also had faster sailing ships came out in that period, like the clipper ships. And so people were able to transport from one side of the globe, you know, from Europe to the Americas, from the Americas to China and Japan. And, and so, and, you know, or from India over to Bali and Indonesia, all of these things became much more uh, accessible quicker. And so we began to become a more multicultural world because of Neptune and learn about other people's spiritualities and practices. And, and you know, Pisces, you're about blending in with everything in a lot of ways. And, and in some ways you become obtuse, like people can't understand you because you're not being specific. So that's, you know, there's, that's the shadow. Drunkenness, you know, or drug abuse, you know, that is the shadow of Pisces. And we all have Pisces. Yeah, we all have it in our chart. Doesn't mean your sun sign. It doesn't mean a lot of people I know that are, that are Pisces are pretty straight edge because they know that about themselves. I'm like, uh-uh, not going there, you know. Um, and in a lot of ways, too, you have to look at, you know, Virgo being the partnership sign, you know, of Pisces. Virgo brings about this, like, nice balance. 
for Pisces. Cancer time is great for Pisces, though, because Cancer allows you to be in your heart. There's that nice emotional water sign understanding. You're going to do some of your best work, and it's going to be a good time for vacations and travel. So, I mean, and if you have children, fifth house is your children. You get to be, you know, if your kids are adult children, maybe they'll come and visit you. If your kids are just little kids, spend time with them, you know, cultivate your relationship with them. It's so much fun. It's so wonderful. And, and, and it's fleeting. So everything that you invest in your children, it'll come back in the long run. So, and if you have creative projects too, the, this opens up the floodgates for creative projects. And I think, you know, we're a little more introspect when we have a fourth house transit. So like, you know, this weekend maybe, and you know, while the sun's in Gemini. Or, but, you know, as soon as it gets into cancer, boom, it's like breakout season for you. So, and that's pretty much all I've got to share with you today. I just want to thank you for being here with me today. And um, I really want you to subscribe. I'd love it if you shared this video with a friend. Push the like button. Your comments are welcome. And many of you are friends I don't know, but I'm just going to close with an Om Shanti Shanti with me. And I want to also thank Anna Meehan, my partner and camera person, for really helping make this production better in every way. Om Shanti 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 Om Tatsat